to another episode of Owning Your Personal Brand. Today, we're going to be talking about personal branding for those in academic professions. And I'm very excited to be joined by Greg Hedgepeth, and he is going to share some insights and talk to you about his experience being in academia and how he's been able to work on his personal brand. So Greg, thank you so much for being here today. Hey, Amy, thank you so much for having me. You know, it's always a pleasure to hang out with you. And, and I've had the opportunity to uh, view a couple of uh, your episodes on owning your personal brand. So I'm all humbled, right, to be amongst those that get an opportunity to kind of hang out with you and talk a little bit about branding. Cool. Well, let's start with just share a bit of background about yourself, what you're doing, which is a lot. So what you're doing now and kind of a little bit about how you got into marketing. I'd love to hear that as well. No, absolutely. And so I always like to share and start out by saying, man, I'm, I'm just a little country boy from Halifax County, North Carolina. Um, and, and so born and raised Halifax County, North Carolina, uh, went to school East Carolina University. And that's really where I got my, I guess I cut my teeth in this marketing communication space. I've been in higher education, uh, marketing communication, public relations, news services uh, for about 16 and a half years now. Uh, when I say it out loud, I, I sound old, but... <laughs> <laughs> like, so, so in 16 and a half years now um, and have had the opportunity to hold positions, whether it be uh, at the divisional level, department level, uh, kind of university uh, wide uh, uh, opportunities to uh, lead marketing communications units, uh, serve as chief communications officer for a while down in South Florida. Love that opportunity. Uh, and it has brought me full circle back to Raleigh, North Carolina, where I now serve as the uh, director of marketing and communications for the North Carolina State University graduate schools. Um, and, and prior to that was here at State in the ecosystem as communications director for the Institute for Emerging Issues, which is a huge think tank that the university has here uh, that goes out into all 100 counties across North Carolina, uh, taking kind of the university's resources, research and, and its efforts uh, into the community uh, for the betterment of North Carolina. Um, you mentioned that I wear a number of hats, right? I don't think we got enough time for me to explain them all or, or, or list them all, but I'll share uh, that I also have had the opportunity to serve as an adjunct professor at Shaw University in the mass comms and digital technology space. Shout out to the Bears. Um, I've, I've, I've worked uh, for, for a number of years. A lot of people don't notice about me, but as a, a law enforcement officer, mm -hmm. uh, certified law enforcement officer for the state of North Carolina, did it both full-time and part-time reserve. Um, and, and if that wasn't enough, man, I am a social entrepreneur. I don't know why, but I absolutely love everything that comes with being uh, an entrepreneur and creating opportunities for others and yourself. Um, and so uh, I am the president and, and CEO of Substantial Media LLC, which is a multimedia platform. It's black owned and operated uh, multimedia platform that looks to amplify the positive stories uh, within black communities across our state. Um, and so super honored and excited to, to, to kind of be a champion in, in that space um, and, and be a voice to some degree. Somebody said this the other day and I went, oh, wow. To, to be a voice uh, in this kind of Black legacy press, Black media space. Mm -hmm. So that's a little bit about me. Good, good. Well, definitely you are the definition of hard work. <laughs> I, knew, I knew most of that, except for the police officer I learned about a year ago. And I was like, what? I was like, what does yes. he have to do? <laughs> yes. So, and, look, and, a, and a husband, right. and a father <laughs> of two beautiful right. little girls, and man. <laughs> But that goes to show you however busy you think you are, you're probably not, and you have more time to do, <laughs> to do more. So let's get into a little bit. The first question I wanted to ask you is kind of why it's necessary for people in a position like yours where you're, for most of your career, have been affiliated with a university. Why is it so important to develop a brand that is separate from your job and from your university? No, absolutely. And, and first and foremost, it goes back to an old adage that my granddaddy taught me a long time ago. He said, you always got to have a side hustle. <laughs> and then that side hustle need a plan B and a plan C in case either one of them two plans don't work out for you. Um, and when I think about it, you know, oftentimes I think folks that get into this higher education, marketing and communications or just in the higher education space in general, uh, because of the just sheer nature of higher ed, you know, we don't look at ourselves 
like those folks in the private sector or the corporate world, right? But in in reality, like we're in charge of multi million dollar divisions, units, programs, initiatives, um, and 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 people need to know about that, right? Like we need to let people know what our talents, our skill sets are and how those things translate into other avenues and, and potential streams of revenue and opportunity. Um, and so when I think about uh, it, it it's, it's a must, right? Like we, we, we here in academia, oftentimes I think though, have, have kind of gotten into that comfortable space, if you will, right? Uh, always never losing sight of like innovation and, and, and making sure that we're um, staying ahead or, or at least uh, in step with trends. But, but oftentimes, you know, we don't do those same, what I would consider, we don't look at marketing, communications, branding, if you will, uh, especially from a personal standpoint, the same way that I think some of those folks that are out here, go-getters, everyday entrepreneurs are doing. Um, but it's so vital, right? It is so vital because at the end of the day, branding, right, uh, is nothing more than letting people know who you are, mm -hmm. right? Your values, what you stand for, your abilities, your capabilities, right? Mm -hmm. um, and, and how those things translate into, you know, um, serving people, serving community, uh, you know, and to some degree serving self, so. Yeah, no, I think that's great because since you do have so many different um, areas that you touch, it's like you want to make sure that your brand transfers and translates through all of those things. So you, you mentioned being a professor at a completely different university. So you don't want to be just known as Greg from NC State. You want to be known as Greg and, and like you said, the values and what you stand for. So I think that's really important. The other thing you made me think of is now you've been at NC State for quite a while, but what about people who leave and go from one university to the next? making sure that they have that personal brand that can stand alone and, and, and kind of help them separate themselves from that past university that they Absolutely. I, 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 Amy, you, you bring up a good point because I said this a uh, couple of weeks back in a, in a workshop that I did. I told the folks, I said, hey, listen, man, what you have to have a firm understanding is that your personal brand follows you, mm -hmm. right? And, and, and if you don't have one, I said, it's kind of like, if you had a life insurance policy, but it was just with the company that you resided right. in, right? Like, so the moment you leave that company, all the money and everything you didn't paid in, the time you didn't invest right. in, and all that good stuff, like that's done, right? That, that's gone. Like that mm -hmm. legacy for whatever it was, was then and in that moment. And so it's like, what are you taking with you, mm -hmm. right? Like, what are you championing that exists outside of? And, and the other part of that, why it's so important and it's crazy because this topic is so like, you know, timely for me because of these conversations we've been having over the summer is, is when we think about it, right? If we're not championing ourselves, then like, like how are we, how are we doing a service to the institutions mm -hmm. that we that we're in, right? Like if we're not out there and people knowing who we are, people experiencing us, and we're building a relationship with them through our own personal uh, brands and ways, then like how do how do they now know, right? right? A lot of my students oftentimes will tell me they say, "Man, I took this class because of you." Hmm. What? That's awesome, right? It's like, man, I, I've heard about you through X, Y, and Z. And they told me I need to do this. Or I saw this podcast you were on and yeah. you were talking about something completely different. But when I look, you were in the same space that I'm in. Yeah. And so it's just an awesome opportunity to continuously build relationship. So, yeah, absolutely. Well, what are some of the things that you do for your brand? Like, what are some of the activities, marketing activities that you do to help kind of develop and, and maintain that brand? Oh my goodness. I'm all over the place. Uh, it's crazy because, right, I oftentimes say, you know, I can preach it, right? <laughs> I execute it well for, 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 for companies and other organizations. But right. you know, when it comes to myself, it's like, oh, no, that's fine. I'll, I'll be okay. Just do this. But but in, in all actuality, it's things like this, right? Mm -hmm. It's taking full advantage of unique opportunities and moments to just be who I am, yeah. uh, which is Greg Hedgepeth, right? This non-apologetic, uh, just genuine Halifax County born and raised guy that's just like, man, I'm out here figuring it out too. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and, and let's figure it out together. And so, you know, opportunities like that, I, I oftentimes uh, find myself, you know, um, uh, posting things on social media that talk more about 
who I am, the things I've experienced and been exposed to, and not necessarily those things in a way that's like, oh, and, and NC State gave me the opportunity. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Granted, give homage to, to, to the place that allowed you uh, and invested in you, right? But but trust and believe they're benefiting from it as well. Yeah. Um, and so, you know, I'm, I'm oftentimes... Uh, looking at even those experiences that I'm that I'm having in 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 this kind of uh, professional space, right? When I wear that hat, and I'm sharing it and translating it in a way that's like, man, these are skill sets that are now attached to Greg Hedgepeth, yeah. right? And so social media is my friend. I oftentimes say though, like I'm not, I am not the avid, I'm not the avid TikToker mm-hmm. or Twitter. Uh, I do enough to get by, right? Mm-hmm. Because uh, you'll never see me do a challenge, a dance, a song, uh, but but I'm gonna be who I am, right. and and so and and oftentimes I use that social media tool, probably not to its best, but I certainly do use it. Yeah. Um, and and believe it or not, as you mentioned, right, taking full advantage of opportunities to serve in different capacities and wear different hats. I just jumped on, uh, you know, uh, grateful for the opportunity, but just became a, a staff senator here at North Carolina State University, which is an awesome opportunity to be exposed to other departments, units, people mm-hmm. all across the institution and not just the institution, but the UNC system. Mm-hmm. Right. You know, I serve on the East Carolina University Alumni Association Board, which is a great opportunity to not only give back to my alma mater, but meet interesting, exciting new alumni and people um, and, and, and talk. Right. If I can't do nothing else, I can talk. <laughs> and, and I share this real quickly with you. I, I was, you know, I was born and raised, like I said, Halifax County in a Baptist church. So what that means is I can go. So you're going to have to either start playing a piano like a sub or, or figure out a way to clap me down. <laughs> but but, but an old, a old gentleman told me a while back, he was like, there were four things that you absolutely have to master in order to be be successful, right? To, to, to really be successful in whatever it is you decide to do. Uh, and I said I wouldn't get up here and be like, the four no, things, I'm not, my I'm people is ready. So. three things, right? <laughs> and so, but I'll share these, these four things. He said, you know, first and foremost, you, and he called them powers, right? He was like, you, you, you've got to have uh, uh, knowledge, knowledge-based power, right? You've, you've got to know what you know, mm-hmm. right? Be a subject matter expert or at least somewhere in the middle around mm-hmm. something. He said, then you have to have this charismatic power, this, commu- this ability to communicate, right? To, to, to articulate exactly what it is and be clear about it, right? Um, and then he said, you know, you've got to have this, 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 what he called uh, ability to network, right? This, this networking power. He actually asked it in the form of a question. He said, what's the power that gives you the ability to be everywhere at once? And I was naive. I was a little younger. And I go, uh, you can fly, you transportation, t- teleportation, right? And he's like, nah, man, you're missing the whole point. He was like, the ability to network. Mm-hmm. gives you the ability to be in so many places at once. Right now, I'm probably on the heart and mind of someone somewhere saying, I know a guy, mm-hmm. right? Um, and so that that power to network, the networking power. And the last one, this was the one. He said, you have to have authoritative power. He said, if you can master all four of those powers, and what he meant by that authoritative power was you ain't wishing and hoping stuff happen, Right. You don't wish you could take off to be able to go and speak at a conference and such and such, right? You position yourself to where you are the authority over your life, the decisions that you make. Mm-hmm. Um, and you now have that ability to go and do. And he said, if for whatever reason you lack in any of those powers, run yourself just like any other corporation. Yeah. Go out and hire somebody to help you do it well. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and so those were the four things that I think if I had to share like how I practice or how I move or my philosophy in this kind of personal branding space, that would be it. No, that's excellent. So I'm just going to recap those. <laughs> well, that, that was great. So it's the knowledge or like subject matter expertise, communication. You said charisma, but, you know, being able to communicate what you yeah. know, networking, being in multiple places at a time and authoritative power. I think those are excellent. Um, I think what she brought up previous to that, being on the different boards and stuff like that, the networking aspect is so important because I do think that sometimes people are like, well, what do I do to develop my personal brand? Social media often comes to mind first. Mm -hmm. 
And I think it's important what you said. You don't have to be everywhere. You just have to find at least one or two channels that work for you, work for your schedule, work for your personality, and kind of work through that. Don't feel like you have to be on something else just because someone else is. But then the networking piece is probably something we don't think about enough and how important that is to your brand. Being on the boards and things like that, that's partially networking, but it's also giving back, like you said. Yeah. And so there's lots of different tactical things you can do. So I appreciate that. I like I like the four. The four yes, powers. Yes. <laughs> I like the four powers. The the next thing I want to get into is is credibility. Mm. I think that that's an important thing to consider when we talk about personal branding. But what are what are your thoughts on how you know building that brand can really help you gain more credibility in whatever it is that you're doing? Yes. No. Credibility is so important. Right. And it starts and ends again. I go back with this idea of building relationship. Mm -hmm. Right. And in any uh, relationship building, there's this level of accountability. Mm -hmm. Right. Like I got on posted on my wall. My, not not in here, but uh, posted on my wall. Um, we're accountable for the things we do in that which we do not do. Right. Mm -hmm. Like. And so to me, what that means is. In order for my personal brand to be one that people gravitate toward or, you know, get the opportunities to come and be on owning your personal <laughs> brand uh, is, is because every day I'm going to wake up and try to be the very best version of myself. Right. And that's hard. God knows, y'all. Like when I tell you, if anybody is listening to this, that is a hard thing to do is to wake up every day and go, what am I going to do to enhance or be better than I was yesterday? And in doing so, how do I then communicate to others that I was working on me mm. and it worked, right? And so it, it for me, it's, it's that. It starts there in building that credibility. Um, I go back to those powers, mm -hmm. right? I also share um, that it's these it's for me, it's this ethos, right? Like it's it's this thing that it's a mantra. It's I am and I am most certainly not. I will and I will never. And my students hate hearing it. Right. They, but every chance I get, I'm talking about like, man, fi finish this out for me. I am and I am most certainly not. I will and I will never. I am most certainly, you know, a young black man from Halifax County, North Carolina. I'm most certainly not whatever it is you thought a rural North Carolina, Halifax County man should be. Right. I will always strive to be the best version of myself. I will never allow anyone to tell me that I'm less than anything than substantial. Right. Like it, it's it's like this this idea now that 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 I live, I breathe, mm -hmm. and it kind of just exudes itself when I'm out or when I'm serving or if I'm just even in a meeting, I was in a meeting before this thing, right? And it's like, hmm, I wonder what Greg thinks, right? <laughs> and it's like, well, you know, as the communications guy, here's how I believe this yeah. would work. But I'm, yeah. I'm doing that from a space and a place of, I'm accountable for if this works, and I'm also accountable if it doesn't, Yeah. right? I'm, I'm, I'm also very much aware that you're looking at me for that subject matter expertise now. And, and if I'm in this space and confident in this space, if my brand says that I'm the guy, then be the guy. Yeah. Right. So so that that's kind of for me how that question of credibility. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, it starts and ends with accountability. Mm -hmm. No, I love that. I think one of my first um, kind of steps to building the brand is know yourself. Yes. And I think that sometimes when people are not as confident as they could be, those mantras are really good. You know, really, what are you? Who are you? And reminding yourself of that every single day, not allowing other people to change, you know, that thought of yourself. So I think that's really great. And that does help to build that confidence that you need. Like you said, if you're good at this, then be good. If you know this, then tell people you know it, right? But sometimes if you don't have that confidence, it's harder. It's harder to do that. So absolutely. I no, I, 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 I make no mistake. Like it is not easy. Right. Yeah. Um, yeah. And so that's why I love about being a communicator and helping mm -hmm. others figure out ways to communicate. Right. It starts yeah. and ends with that. Why? Like, yeah. why are you doing it in the first place? 
Yeah. Right? What are you What are you trying to achieve? What's the goal? The objective? Right. You know, everybody got these acronyms: smarty, smart, all this stuff. It's like, nah, that, none of that matters. It's like, why are you trying? Yeah. To yeah. And, and, and start there. The other part, which you you hit, you triggered something for me, is off, oftentimes, right? Like we don't like to equate ourselves to the very things that that we consume. Right. Mm -hmm. It's like almost like a subconscious thing. It's like I told somebody one day I was like, or I do this kind of workshop thing around marketing, communication, your brand, your organization. And I said, hey, man, how many of y'all would fly on the first plane that the Wright brothers flew? Nobody raises their hand. Right. I said, how many of y'all got a bag phone? You know, y'all know what I'm talking about? The, the car phones that you kind of take in a bag and you get with you. like, nah, none of us. And so why y'all still out here with these old outdated websites? Mm -hmm. Well, why y'all still out here with, I said, would you put your information into a, a, a website that was like a black screen and just green letters that, and like that blinking thing on the matrix? It was like, nah, it's like, okay, then like, that's the dark web. No. And so, so why are you okay with like, like understanding that there's some guidelines, some things that you like, I, I would not stoop below. Right. right. It's like, man, like Coca-Cola always been red. Pepsi always been blue. Mm -hmm. Like why you out here? trying to recreate the wheel every 15 days like like just be that thing right. consistently and, yeah. and and see what happens yeah so that, that <laughs> no, was good. That's good. no that's good well the last thing i want to ask you about is just some advice you know what mm -hmm. advice would you give to anyone listening that may be in a similar position to you or looking to get into more of an academic position on how they should start what they should think about for their personal branding no absolutely and and i go back to what i just said know your why Mm -hmm. Why are you trying to achieve whatever it is that you're trying to achieve or accomplish whatever it is you're trying to accomplish? Yeah. The other part of that is, and here I go again, right? The three, right? The, the three C's, right? The, it, but I practice these. I really do. It's you've got to be clear, mm -hmm. right? Be clear, right? But be clear on what it is you want. Be Communicate, be clear on what it is you're trying to do. The other part is be creative, mm -hmm. Right. Like the, the last thing we need is, is someone who's like, you know, just buy the book. Nothing changes. And it, because, again, right, while we tend to eye toward innovation in 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 our profession, we're oftentimes kind of lagging a little behind industry. Right. Mm -hmm. But as in the private and corporate space, man, innovation is important. Right. A lot of people that come to these spaces from marketing firms and other places, they get like frustrated they're like man we're moving too right. slow right. you know we're not doing enough we got to be and it's like yeah like we well hold this higher education slow down a little bit like we're gonna get there these are great ideas but first off i don't even think we got the budget for that mm -hmm. like you know what i mean and so 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 oftentimes i'll share is like you got to know that space right mm -hmm. so be clear but be creative in how we achieve and get it done um and then lastly it's just be consistent yeah. Right. Again, I go back to that's a hard thing to do, man. Like just waking up every day and just being exactly what you say you are, who yeah. you want to be or do what you want to do. Um, and so those are the three. Uh, those that's the advice I would give. And then understand that you are so much more than than just the position. Mm -hmm. So much more than the organization. You are, in essence, the position. You are yeah. in essence the representative of the organization. So don't go into it saying, hey man, here's my job description. And that's what I gotta go by. It's like, yeah, that's the that's the that's the guidelines, right? Like, but there's some gray in there, man. That's mm -hmm. that's like you know, being a quarterback and running to play exactly how the play is supposed to be ran. Nope, no one does that, right? <laughs> like it's a it's a matter of understanding the landscape and saying, Hey, look, they this one calls for me to pause a little bit before I actually take off on a full sprint. Yeah. Uh, or instead of going right, I'm gonna go left. I'm gonna have to call this audible. Yeah. Um, and so uh, it, it that that to me is what I would share with anyone who's looking to either get into this higher education, marketing, communications, public relations space, or for those my colleagues, man, that are already in it, like mm -hmm. living your moments. Like if you are out here championing, like again, I go back. NC State is a multi-million billion dollar industry. Mm -hmm. Right. Like it is its own corporation. Uh, the product we sell is a little different. That's mm -hmm. all it is. Uh, and so own that and, and, and find unique ways to, to talk about, you know, how you achieve great things. Yeah, I think that's great. I think the three C's are great. So you have be clear, be creative, be consistent. So I, I like that. But one thing I just want to add, you touched mm -hmm. on it a little bit, which is remember why people hired you. You know, just like you said, 
the job description is a guide that those are some of the things they want you to do, but they didn't hire you just because of that. So it's like finding, you know, knowing your why is important, but also finding that thing that makes you unique and that makes you special. That's why somebody hired you. So don't be afraid, whether it's in an academic situation or a corporate situation, don't be afraid, like you said, to be creative, be innovative in how you do things, because it is that kind of secret sauce or that specialty of why people brought you in in the first place. So that's kind of the expectation is that you're not going to just do what's written down. You're going to find like really innovative ways to do things. And so I really I definitely appreciate that. That's one. you. That's awesome. <laughs> yes. Well, listen, thank you so much for sharing. And we have some great lists, some great acronyms. I appreciate that. But before we go, I want you to just take a few minutes and talk about Substantial. Uh, you mentioned it in the beginning, but just talk about it a little bit more and, and let people know how they can learn more about it and actually read this magazine. Oh, my goodness. Listen, absolutely. I feel like I'm on a I'm going to be on a tour in the next couple of days, like promoting a new movie or something. But y'all, we just dropped uh, the uh, summer issue of Substantial Magazine. I'm super excited about it. It is all about uh, black businesses, black entrepreneurship and the uh, organizations and institutions that support them. Uh, we've got a ton of, uh, of amazing uh, uh, black entrepreneurs, black business owners, uh, black leaders, right? Advocates in this business space, um, in, in this issue. Um, and, and as I had mentioned earlier, right? Like that's all it's about for us is, you know, when we think about owning a brand, owning like substantial is it, hmm. right? Like of considerable importance, size and worth, being strongly built and made, the essentials of something. Like we are substantial. Hmm. Right? That's our motto. Uh, and so is our community. That's you. That's that's everything you do. That's everything that we try to do and, and achieve. Uh, and so when we when we came up with uh, the idea around developing a multi uh, media platform, it had no other uh, it had no other name. Right. Like it, it was like, oh, it's going to be substantial. Mm. People were like, oh, OK, yeah, it's going to be good. Yeah. Like, nah, like the, that's going to be the name. Of it. It's going to be substantial. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and so we've, we, we're excited about where we are. We're excited about where we're headed. And as mm -hmm. you can see, hopefully below, uh, you know, go to wearesubstantial.com and we encourage you to subscribe. Um, we, we encourage you to share stories, um, you know, throw pitches our way. Um, tell us exactly who we should be featuring, uh, what, what, what type of concepts and ideas we should be uh, putting out there in community. Uh, because it's about the centralization of our stories, Oops. right? And, and, and the ability to harness those, store those for the next generations that come behind us to go. That was exactly who I need to look up to mm -hmm. and aspire to be. Um, so thank you so much uh, for giving me that moment uh, to do that shameless yeah. plug. But, but y'all, please, please, please go check out wearesubstantial.com and, and look at the summer issue and tell us how we can continuously improve. Right. So. Perfect. And then where um, let's see, we put this up. How can people connect with you? Oh, my goodness. Look, hit me on LinkedIn. Uh, most people say, you know, DM me on Instagram, Twitter, all that good stuff. Like, nah, man, I am really all about that business. So hit me on LinkedIn and I assure you I will respond. Um, and, and, and so please, 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 you all, I, I'm again, just a Halifax County young man born and raised out here trying to figure this thing out and I'm forever learner. Right. Uh, and so if there is something uh, that we could do together, if there is something uh, that I could be taught or if there is something that I can teach uh, or share, please don't hesitate. Perfect. Well, Greg, thank you again so much for being on the show this week, owning your personal brand. And you have shared a lot. We have some great wisdom, some great insights, not just for those in academia, but really what you shared kind of applies to everyone. And I greatly appreciate that. As I always say, every one of us has a personal brand. Doesn't matter if you want one, if you're looking for one, you have one. And it's really up to you to own it so that someone else doesn't own it for you. And we appreciate having Greg on this week. And we will continue to have a new episode next week. So until next time, thank you so much for listening.